In this video, we're going to discuss the balance sheet account called non-controlling interest. So non-controlling interest occurs when you acquire more than 50% of another company, but less than 100% of that company. Okay, so if you acquire 100% of another company, you're not going to have any non-controlling interest. So let's say you acquire 70% of another firm. What's going to happen is now you have to consolidate that company's financial statements with your financial statements so that you're treated as a single entity, right? So that's called consolidation, and I've got some videos on that. So when you consolidate this firm, you're going to take 100% of their assets and their liabilities, and they're going to become your assets and liabilities. However, we have to recognize the fact that you only own 70% of that company. So even though you're taking 100% of their assets and liabilities, you only own 70% of that firm. So there's somebody else or multiple people who own the other 30%. And so those are the non-controlling shareholders. And so what we're going to do is we're going to recognize an account, a stockholder's equity account, that is called non-controlling interest. Okay, So it's going to be part of equity. And it represents those minority shareholders, those non-controlling shareholders, their claims against the share of that firm that you've acquired. So even though you're taking 100% of their assets and liabilities, this non-controlling interest equity account is saying, hey, there are some other people out there who have claims against this firm that, you, that you've acquired. So I want to show you how you would go about calculating non-controlling interest. So let's say that your company... Your company pays $80,000 cash to acquire 80% of another company called Chimp Bicycles. Okay, so you pay 80 grand and you get 80% of that company. To figure out what the non controlling interest is, we need to know the total value of Chimp Bicycles. 80,000 is only what you paid to get 80%. What is the imputed value of the entire firm? The imputed value of chimp bicycles as a whole okay so we're talking about chimp bicycles what is the value well if you paid eighty thousand dollars for eighty percent we can set up an equation and say okay look if eight so we've got eighty over a hundred that represent zero point eight or eighty percent okay so eighty over a hundred is equivalent to eighty thousand over x and x is that imputed value so what we can do is we, we can cross multiply, just do a little algebra here. So 80 times x, that 80 times x, is equal to 80,000 times 100. Okay, I'm just, just cross multiplying here and then setting the things equal to each other. So 80x is equal to 8 million. And then x is going to be, if we divide each side by 80, x is going to be $100,000. So that means that th this number, let me change colors here. So this number, this X, is $100,000. So what that means in layman's terms is that you paid $80,000 for 80% of this company. That's giving an imputed value to the entire firm of Chimp Bicycles of $100,000. So that's the imputed value of all. That's the, that's the entire thing of Chimp Bicycles. Its value is $100,000. How do we then find the minority interest or the non-controlling interest? We say, okay, well, if we've got 80%, then they have 20%. The non-controlling shareholders have claims against 20%. 20% of 100,000 would be $20,000. And so we would recognize a stockholder's equity account. It would appear on our balance sheet of $20,000 for non-controlling interest. 